So uh, I'm presenting the Groundwater Database in Africa, how we can improve their quality and use this information in the future. I, in this presentation, I will describe the situation of Groundwater Database from several African countries and provide some recommendations about future improvement and analysis of these data. I use this data set for my research with the UNICEF over the last 10 years. I make this presentation as the lead researcher on a piece of work that I am doing with UNICEF. With UNICEF, we mapped the potential for manual drilling in 15 countries between 2008 and 2012 in Africa. And this allowed me to collect and analyze data for over 170,000 water points in Africa from existing databases. Please note that some of these country studies are more detailed than others due to the variable or resource available and the data available. Between 2013 and 2015, I carried out a research project under the APGO program. This project focused on the integration of different sources of information to improve the interpretation of shallow hydrogeology and identify suitable zones for manual drilling. This research project was led by the University of Milano Bicocca and partners with Senegal and Guinea. The UNIF study drew on data from the National Water Point Database for inventory and the National Groundwater Database drilled in logs known as stratigraphic logs. These data were also taken from reports and studies about groundwater and geological maps. Information was also obtained from drillers and hydrogeologists at national level. It was a mix of existing data analysis and perception of local experts. Given the lack of easily available data, the interview with experts and the qualitative information were extremely important. For all 15 countries, data were collected and analyzed from records of machine drill boreholes, hand wells, and manual drill boreholes. Data about machine drill boreholes were the most commonly available data. In some countries, such as Guinea and Senegal, this was even available for the whole country. There was less data available on Handag Well. Even in countries where this type of water source, Handag Well, are very common, such as Guinea. In most cases, the information for Handag Well, the information available was only for government funded programs. No data on manual drill well were available from the national inventory between 2008 and 2012. Figure on the right is a drilling log, also known as a stratigraphic log. This log shows the different rocks and formations that are drilled, as well as where water is struck and depth of water. These are very important, and I shall return to them later during my presentation. This table provides an overview of the type of data available in each of the 15 countries. I will not talk in detail about this, but it clearly shows that although 10 of Tanzan or water points have been recorded in 15 countries, detailed data are lacking in many cases. First of all, there is a clear lack of stratigraphic logs in many countries. Piezometer correspond to borehole equipped for monitoring the water table over time. Information about modification of groundwater depth, however, is limited since there are limited time series of record of water level over time in the same place. In some countries, such as Burundi and Sierra Leone, there is a very small and not well organized centralized database. You can see this from the limited number of water points stored. The term undefined is used to show situation where it was possible to have a rough estimate of the number of water points recorded in the database used between 2008 and 2012, but now it was not possible to differentiate what the source were. In my work, I uncover four main problems with the groundwater database. The first problem is the fragmentation of the data. I will explain this for example of Zambia and Sierra Leone. 20 years ago, there was a large effort in Zambia to create a national database of groundwater data. This was through the CMMU program. Importantly, 
data that has been so transparently collected by different programs has not been consolidated and transferred in the central database. In Sierra Leone, in 2008, data were scattered in the different provinces and generally only available in hard copies. And at that moment, there was a large program to create a national geographic information system. This means that probably the situation in Sierra Leone has changed in the last year. The second common problem is that data are not available for the whole country, but only parts of it. In some places, such as Niger, where we can see the maps of the two databases collected at the national level, this may be due to the not homogeneous distribution of water points, with higher concentration in some regions. However, in other countries, such as Guinea, there has clearly not been systematic transfer of data into the central database with large difference from one zone to the other. In those areas where most of the people still rely on hand well, data are often scarce. In these zones, it would be important to have available information to support groundwater exploitation activities and improve the present situation of water supply. Thirdly, there were clearly many errors in the data. Some points were in duplicate, for example. It showed that there is a lack of quality control and validation of the input. Data on water levels and depth of wells often had their unrealistic data. Finally, there was a lack of documents that explain how the database are organized, including how the data were collected and stored. As already mentioned by Lawrence, frequently there was a lack of clarity with respect to the coordinates used. Also, in general, very important tests, some data or stratigraphic logs were simply not included in the database. In all of these countries, there is a vast number of borehole logs. They are in hard copy and are stored in the office of national institution or with the drilling company or drilling projects. Unfortunately, very, very few are available in numeric form. This is a pity because such information is extremely relevant for planning the construction of new boreholes or undertaking rehabilitation and upgrade work. I would like to share with you some ideas for integrating this valuable information into a new medical database. The first thing is to scan the document and link it to the corresponding record in the water point database. At least then the information can be made widely available in digital format and make possible to read all the geological details of a single borehole. With the same procedure, it is possible to associate the different documents included in the technical report of a borehole, like the sketch map of the area, the description, the field report, and the results of water quality analysis. The next level involves processing the stratigraphic data into specific tables integrated in the groundwater database. The information from the logs, upper and lower limbs of each layer and lithological description, can be used for developing maps of expected lithology in aquifers at the local level, as well as querying the data to obtain the distribution of selected geological formation. Finally, the log can be codified, organized, and subsequently used to analyze the geometry, textual, and hydraulic parameters of aquifers in the country. This can provide great support to hydrogeological interpretation at the regional level. I found two cases of automatic analysis of stratigraphic data that I consider positive. A good experience was running in Zambia in 2010, promoted by the German cooperation. At that time, it was in the southern part of Zambia that probably extended in other regions. Procedure and tools were put in place in Senegal and Guinea by the University of Milano Bicocca, University of Sheikh Anta Diop, Dakar, and SNAP in Conakry in the frame of the Afro program. There are now many simple tools that can be used to collect geographical location with attributes of water points. In the meantime, water resource monitoring is also getting more attention. As a result, there is a much water point mapping activity and new groundwater databases are being set up. This is allowing updated information about the distribution of water points and the functionality. Also, some parameters can be measured over time. However, some information it was included in the original technical report and database, like the hydrogeological context, the drilling logs, the chemical analysis in depth of water, is generally not recorded in new data. If the original data are lost, 
the information cannot be obtained again. An integrated groundwater database is a key element to support policies and implementation of water supply programs. But achieving this integrated database requires specific action on the original data. Full revision of the original database is required, correcting the existing errors, incorporating all the relevant information available only in paper format into numeric tables, and writing comprehensive documents described in detail the database means including metadata and data dictionary. New data collecting must be planned taking into consideration the already existing database, defining a compatible structure and the association of new data with old identifiers. The definition of clear procedure and standard for new data collection in organization is important to train technical staff in charge of this task and produce high-quality database. Although they're incomplete and they contain errors, the existing database and archives have an immense value for future development of groundwater exploitation, and they cannot be abandoned. On the contrary, they must be saved and integrated with new data. Therefore, it is important to find resources to improve the quality, completing the data, and controlling the quality. Thanks for your attention.